This is the cat teaser toy, which I absolutely love. And it's the only toy that I use for socialization because this wire string moves in a very jerky, realistic manner versus the cloth strings. Um, there is something called the cat dancer, which is a hard wire, which is not bad, but I do find this is easier and more effective to use. Later on, when you're standing up and playing with a cat, this you're gonna want it this long so that you can move around and, and play with the cat. But initially when we're socializing, we're spending a lot of time sitting down on the floor and then using this toy to complement all the treat work that we do in order to get the cat to go across our extended legs, to hop across our cross legs lap, et cetera, et cetera. So what we have to do is, if you go where the, the connector is, I take the, the wire, like, like so, and I wrap it around my four fingers three times. So one, two, three, right? So make this nice and even. And then I take the mouse and I like put it in and out three times as well. One, two, three, and this will lock it in place. And you know, pull it and it'll, this will extend a bit, this will get a little smaller, but it's nice and tight. And now the length and height is perfect for you to use it while you're sitting on the ground. Because if you're trying to use it when it's really long and holding the wire super high up, you're not gonna be able to control it with the proper movements that you need. And then um, this will unravel over time. So as it um, starts to unravel, just unravel it completely and repeat the three loops again. Uh, and, and when you're ready to play, standing up once the cat's nearing graduation, you can just unravel it and still use it. A reminder that you should never leave any one toys unattended with a cat. Always tuck it away into a cabinet, a closet, or a drawer when not in use. Because whether it's wire or string, the cat can get strangled. And uh, unfortunately, I have um, spoken to someone unrelated to socialization. She happened to have a kitten she was fostering and the kitten got strangled because the kitten was playing with a wand toy. It got stuck around the leg of a chair while the kitten was twirling around it. And by the time she got home, it was too late. So that wasn't related to socialization, but the wand toy was left out. The other reason, especially with this one, that you don't want to leave the wand toy out is because this particular um, mouse, the the little fur comes out very easily and the cat can swallow it. Um, there's been some reports that cats try to eat the whole thing in their mouth and it gets stuck in their mouth and, and it's very difficult to take out. So it's also a choking hazard. When you do, but you know, when you're playing with a, the cat with this, I usually have no problems at all. Um, as long as I'm, I'm always supervising the use. When you buy the cat teaser toy, there are three kinds of attachments. Um, there's the, this mouse, there's a little fish, and there's a little bee. Those are the only three that I will buy. They do come with larger attachments, but you can imagine anything that's quite large, if, the, if you're playing with a cat who's scared and it swings at them, you know, it looks like a wrecking ball is coming at your face, and that's quite scary. So I like to stick to the little attachments, and then it's something that they can um, you know, get really interested in, in playing out, playing and chasing after. So another thing I also do in terms of playing with the wand toy, in addition to having it go back and forth on my legs, over my legs, etc., is sometimes, especially in the beginning where the cat is more hesitant, I'll take the wand and I'll hold it on the wire, which is something you cannot do with a string. And if you hold it on the wire, I'll gently bring it towards the cat and you wanna let the cat sniff it first because the cat needs to realize it's safe and it's not something that's gonna hurt them. And then you can take it back and you can even, while the cat's in the cave, you know, pretend the cat's in the cave over here, you can hold it like this, this length from the end and you could just, you know, move your finger back and forth like this in order to have the mouse do some jerky movements. And usually it's like side to side. And that may get the cat interested while you can play nearby and it's not humongous swings of the wand. 
Uh, so you, again, the cat's usually not in front of me. The cat will be to my side, right? You're sitting sideways of the cat and the, and the, um, the cat cave. And then you could do this while, while you're sitting sideways. So like, like that, right? But make sure to give yourself space between yourself and the cat, at least arm's length or if not more, and you feel like this, you can have it be right, you know, switching back and forth right in front of the cat cave opening. 